Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And I just wanted to pop on here real quick to express my absolute gratitude to the Inghams for relieving my boredom last night. They put up this. This. Just before they put up the main one. They put up this and it said, Back tonight at 5pm for an absolute banger of a vlog. A banger. I am promised a banger. He says that quite often. He overuses that word, admittedly. So, maybe it's not a banger. But, he prom You know, after three days off, you expect it to be fairly bangerish, right? So, you know, they've had three days to do an absolute cracker of a vlog. So... It's got to be something worth waiting for. And then this happened. Yeah, we just went in the supermarket and stocked up on a few bits. I've, I can't lie, I did buy myself and I shouldn't have done it. But I bought another one of those pasta pots, didn't I? <laughs> These are such a rip off. <laughs> Like, they are so blooming expensive. To be fair, this one wasn't quite as expensive as the one we got the other day. Or maybe I just didn't fill it as much. I don't know. But this was still about £11. <laughs> £11 for a bit of pasta. Not even pasta. There's not even pasta. Well, actually, there's a couple of little noodles there. But eleven. how much would that be at home? You shouldn't compare prices because countries are different. Wages are different. But you'd pay like three ninety nine for that at home, wouldn't you? Yeah, but it'd probably sweaty and horrible. From somewhere um, no. soggy and... No, I quite like pasta pots from home. I'm not going to complain about them. <laughs> These ones are very fresh, but yeah, I think that I think converted that was about £11. Maybe 10 <sighs> Yeah. Pasta. Stop to talk about the pasta pot. That was literally the only thing that day one of their adventure was uh, discussing was the fact that she bought pasta and it cost 11 pounds or was it 10 pounds it could have been 10 it could have been 11 maybe it was 13 who knows the drama the drama was just too much to be fair they didn't just buy pasta they bought an ice cream who would have thunk it the one thing that you uh, that you desire in such weather it's an ice cream. Anyway, it can't get any worse than that, can it, surely? On to day two, people. So we're on a massive mission over the next two days to get there and to get a picture at the top of the, the globe statue monument that's there. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's epic. It had better be epic. You're travelling two whole days from where you are. Two whole days just to get yourself a picture just to get a picture not not to have the memories not to uh, have the enjoyment and live in the moment and enjoy what you're doing just to get that picture need that picture at the top of the globe that is the story of your life chris i'm sorry the only thing you'll live for is to say here's a picture i was there who cares <laughs> right doesn't actually matter <laughs> anyway on to day three I really wanted to start this vlog outside this morning, but obviously you can see that is going to be impossible. We almost got blown yeah. over last night. So we've got a beautiful <laughs> little spot with a gorgeous view of a fjord outside the window today, but it is vicious outside and the van definitely nearly got blown off of this cliff last night. <laughs> Not actually. Not really, but you know, but the, wind was, like the wind was mad last night. Um, 
according to everyone else anyway, I think I slept through it all, so. Did you? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, no way. I thought uh, it was this morning. Bed. Not with my incident. <laughs> from seven, I could be. <laughs> <laughs> what? Not with, with my incident. Oh, yeah, Isla did a bit of sleepwalking last night. <laughs> Where's she? It was like, it was kind of, it felt like I was in a dream, because I was going on a mission to do something. It was like, there was like water all down the van, and I had to go do a mission to like, turn the diesel heater on, so I was like, pressing the button. She woke up in the middle of the night, and she started prodding buttons on the diesel heater, and I was like, look, drunk on, I was like, I know what you're doing. And you slept through that, Chris? What the hell? She must have uh, walked over you to get to the heater. No? Since you sleep on the floor. Is that not right? Anyway. So, I only was up in the middle of the night. Um, who would have thunk it, eh? Could she possibly have been on Roblox at that time in the morning? middle of the night even i did wonder did you not why why is your child on roblox in the middle of the night chris any anything to add to to that statement no Chrising him down there, guys, living his best life, trying to get a shot of the van. Like, seriously, who does that? Let me put the camera outside so you can get a real feel. Oh, it stopped a bit. You can get a real feel of this weather. He can't even walk, his hat's blown off, his boxes are out. What's going on there? You disgusting man. <laughs> Oh, you're such an idiot. Oh my gosh, look at the stay of the weather. See, this is what really, really annoys me. Everybody, nobody can see past the fact that he's been an idiot and he's, you know, been stupid and people are laughing at him and probably the iFam are even laughing at him and everything, right? But the fact of the matter is, these are on the holiday of the lifetime or work trip of the lifetime and the kids are in the back of the van five of them and whilst they're supposed to be enjoying themselves and enjoying the scenery and then enjoying being away and everything else these idiots stop in the middle of a snowstorm to catch the perfect shot of a van driving in the snow okay it's stupid it's ridiculous it's not a film set. Your kids are not the crew. Well, they are, but, you know, it's it's ridiculous. And that's something that people don't generally talk about, and I think they should, because imagine being on your dream holiday. You're a child, and you have to sit there and think, oh, Christ, well, we, we stopped again. We stopped again, Dad. Why we stopped again? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, we, we needed to stop because we needed a, a shot of the snow in and the van and in, in the snow and we needed to uh, get that perfect shot mm -hmm. and but you just have to bide your time in the snowstorm don't worry the van's perfectly safe it's perfectly safe don't worry Show what this is. It looks like a load of cat. Oh, it's lot. It looks like lorries. Oh, the road's closed. Oh, what the heck? Oh, we don't have a choice. Is that actually a closed? Road? Oh my gosh, the closed road. We've drove all this way and the road's closed. I don't know if you can see up ahead the barriers across. I'm just calling it. I think you already knew the road was closed. You seem to immediately associate the fact that there was a line of cars to the fact that the, the road was closed. I'm just saying it just seemed too obvious. And Sarah's acting skills are a little bit off on this one. So maybe you want to get one of the kids to do it next time, Sarah. Anyway, road is closed. Got to go home, right? Right, Chris? 
What do the lorries do in this situation? Because they can't just, like, just turn around and go back, can they? Like we can. Just have to wait it out. They can't close the road for long then if there's lorries here. Oh, I can't believe that. I knew the weather, the weather was getting too bad. I know. Me too, Isles. We're so close now as well. All right, so just to give you some perspective, I'm just gonna pop up some maps on the screen showing you where we are right now. We are literally a couple of hours from the location where you catch the convoy to drive up to Nordcap. And um, that is so gutting to have come so far and now be um, stopped and not be able to get any further. So gutting. There is a severe weather alert, unfortunately, for the next 24 hours at least. Um, for high winds and snow and obviously we've been experiencing that quite badly so I'm guessing that's the reason it's shut but the um, yeah the weather outlook for the next into Wednesday is it's Monday now it's still still poopa so that might be it that might be our Nordcap adventure what? finito we might have to do it again another time babe we've got to do this incredible trip that's been like oh, of course, babe. The, the best trip ever it's been amazing we're literally like we're like we're, i can i can literally smell nordcap from where we are we're just we're just underneath its butt <laughs> we're so close oh no chris no no that smells just your beanie i'm sorry so you know when you get a severe weather warning what do you do you just sort of sit there wait it out and hope that you can like survive or, or or what do you do i know what you do chris ingham being chris ingham decides to turn around and drive back out in the snow because you know why not i've only got five kids in the back of the van i i think they'll put you perfectly safe they are inghams that nothing can ever happen to them because they are inghams it's not even funny how close we are we're right at the top of europe right now uh, it's a shame it is a shame we're gonna we're gonna give it like we're gonna we're gonna wait out and just uh, see if i can find some information online about it and uh make a decision about what to do next i mean look you can see why it's closed right <laughs> it's just a, it's just a storm it's what crazy is it? is it a storm is it gone well, that's I insane. That. I've, um, I was just speaking to the, the trucker here, just over my shoulder, and it, he, I just asked him if he knew, if he had any information about when the road might be open again, because there's nothing online that tells you when the roads are going to be open, not that I can find anyway. Um, this whole section where we're parked, obviously, is shown up as closed now. It wasn't when we set off. Uh, but um, anyway, he's just said that he's been sat here for five hours. Um, five hours. He doesn't know when it's going to open again, but he says he's been sat here for five hours because they have to for yeah. their job, and whatever. And he can't just turn around, he has to stay and wait. Can yeah. That? yeah. So that is crazy. Yes. So I think that on that note, that might be our Nordcap adventure done with, unfortunately. I think we're going to have to turn around. <laughs> so frustrating. It is so frustrating because we're so close. I'm going to look at this map just, just, for, just for reference. So this is, the, this is the map right now. This here is where we, we are. The start of the black road is where we are. This is the road that we need to take all the way up to where Nordcap is, but it has turned black, which means that it's, it's shut. <laughs> Obviously, so the entirety of the whole road, right, that we need to take all the way up to the top here, um, is done. So I think we should probably get try and get back down. <laughs> Very good visibility. Visibility is better on your phone than it is in real life. Yeah, it is. <laughs> to look at the road through the phone. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Oh, stop, stop, stop. See, then this happens and you literally can't see anything. So when you said you were only joking, you were only joking that it was vis visibility zero and then this happens and it is literally invisible. <laughs> invisibility? visibility was zero right so how stupid do you actually have to be 
how many times do we have to tell you? How many times does this have to happen before you actually get it through to your thick skulls that this is not a good idea, not to put your kids at risk? Do you need to lose one of them before you fully get it? Because that's what's going to happen at some point, you know, and you're stupid, ridiculous. End of. So it's the next day after our attempt to get to Nordcap was ended due to weather. So we turned around, we came back down towards the town that we were in just before we hit those mountain roads and we've stopped over in the middle of a national park. It's the next morning, is it really? Are you sure it's the next morning, Chris? You seem to be sat in the dark, you've got the light on, you've got the blinds drawn. What? <laughs> Are you actually certain that it is the morning or is it still that same night? Possibly. I'm just saying it doesn't look very... <laughs> I don't know. You've lost me. I'm sorry. Just outside of the town, uh, which is where we are now. We thought we'd stop close by so that we could check the weather again today, check the road closures again today and not make too much of like a hasty decision to abandon the trip to Nordcap. However, waking up this morning, the road situation is exactly the same. It's still closed. The weather forecast for the next week, I'm going to put it all up on the screen. So this is the road closure. Uh, this is the road we're on. We're just down here where the, the arrow is right now, just beneath Alta. And um, this is the road that's closed that we need to take to get to Nordcap. There is only one road from here to take, so we have no other options road-wise. And uh, the weather forecast is really bleak for the next five days at least. Constant snow and high winds and just really like completely, these roads are not going to, I don't know if these roads are going to open or not, um, but it's looking grim and less and less likely that they're going to open anytime soon at least. We didn't want to abandon the trip to Nordcap unless it was absolutely necessary, That hence why we stayed close by last night. Um, but it definitely looks like... We're going to have to say goodbye to the idea of going to Nordcap on this particular trip. We don't have another five days to wait, sitting around, waiting to see if we can get up there. So um, today was kind of like an option to wait around and see what happened, but it's not going to change. So we're going to have to abandon our trip to Nordcap on this particular trip and do it another time. But I just wanted to end the video today just on a kind of a, a higher note than last night. Um, and also just to explain about what we were doing, how we wanted to give it till today to see if things cleared up. They're not going to. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And um, comment below if you've done Nordcap, if you've been up there yourself, especially if you've been up there in winter. I don't know what your experiences were like. I've seen a couple of YouTubers that I watch uh, Van Life doing it. And um, and yeah, it, it looks hairy, but it looks it looks wicked. I'm just so sad that we're so close. We're so close. Literally, we are literally just less than three hours from Nordcap right now. And um, and it's, it's all come to an end. But you know, such is life, such is weather, we can't do anything about that, so um, we're going to crack on and enjoy the rest of this trip as we make our way south, back towards and out of Scandinavia, back towards home in the UK. So um, come back tomorrow and see what we're getting up to. Thank you so much for watching this video, and we'll see you then. Good night, guys. And that is not where this story ends, so check back not tomorrow's vlog, but the vlog after that. And this will continue. So that's a little bit confusing, to be fair. You actually stood at the top there, where you you actually stood right there at your destination, at the top, at the very north point. I'm confused, Chris. You just had a whole monologue. Well, in fact, the entire vlog was building up to the fact that you were not going to make it because of the roads were so closed. But you did. By the time this video went out, you had already knew. In fact, by the time you'd edited this video, you already knew that you were there. You were editing this video at the time you were actually there. What is the matter with you? In fact, you were there yesterday, weren't you? These exclusive pictures. Yeah, I know they're not exclusive for anybody else that has them. But these pictures show the webcam images of you actually being there you arrived at around about 10 past 12 in the afternoon and left about an hour later as you can see by the little timestamp there so i hope you enjoyed yourself but the point here chris 
is that you lie so much it's like an addiction to you right and you know what the saddest thing about this whole thing is that the amount of times that you lie right in front of your own kids you make it acceptable for them to lie you tell lies in front of the kids and they tell their version of the story to the fans so you've got your kids lying to the ifam as well i mean how does that make you feel it can't make you feel very good surely i mean as a parent you must feel pretty shit right the fact that your own children are lying to strangers is that is that how you brought them up is it is that what who am i what am i saying i know who i'm talking to chris i think I think it's it's horrible. You're pathetic. The whole thing was pathetic. I waited three days, twiddling my thumbs, doing nothing. And, you know, come back for a banger, you said. A banger. Well, that was bangerish. Hmm. Anyway, come back tomorrow, everybody, for another banger of a vlog um, from me. I don't know about him, but give this video a thumbs up. We are edging towards that 9000 mark and if we don't get there soon i'm going to i'll go up to i don't know just hit the thumbs up make me happy and i'll see you again soon in another video oh subscribe and give me a thumbs up come back tomorrow for another video take care and bye bye